But everybody, hello and welcome to Popcorn Culture. My name is Ben Carlin and I am your host. Here with me today are three very special guests, including my brother Jay, who was in every episode, his wife, Beth, and my wife, Alice. And hello. if you're listening to today's episode, it means the baby is here. Yeah. Oh my gosh, she's here. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Your parents. We're probably exhausted. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, we're exhausted, so I can only imagine how you feel now in the present. In the I know, I know. Yeah. yeah. I I continuously like as as we progress down this and as it becomes more real, the amount of respect that I have for you two, Jay and Beth, is going up like in unbelievable <laughs> ways like, every day like the fact mm -hmm. that that you were even able to show up and like handle our everyday work problems jay or like a potential crisis or coming up with a video idea or even having to like work late and the amount of extra like home life that you walk into every day with yeah uh and then also exit two or being deprived from. Yeah. It's just, I don't know, it's, it's pretty All of those things are present at the same time. It's like you have to walk into this crazy thing, which is very difficult, but then also, like, if I'm late, I'm immediately feeling guilty, like, I'm not there. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, what I, and I guess, I guess, Beth, for you, it's kind of like, what, what has that shift been like into, or, like, at some point in time, did you anticipate, ultimately, like, maybe being, like, a stay-at-home parent? Right. I think I thought that it was definitely a possibility and I'm grateful for it. But there's still some days when I'm like jealous of Jonathan. I'm like, I want to go to a fun office and talk to other people and do something that's not this and maybe go out to lunch. And like, that sounds so fun. It is, well, I mean, we, it, I mean, we it have helped, a pretty good environment. It helps environment. that we have yeah. a, a very fun job. That, yeah. that is a weird thing. It's like sometimes I wish our job wasn't so fun because then it's like, then at least I could feel bad about going to work. Sometimes, <laughs> <you know? laughs> yeah, it's like, like what, sorry. Right. What What are the the reports from that movie where they beat up the printer that like the, oh, the office boss space? Uh, office space office space and he yeah. always comes over and he's like, have you filled out those? Yeah. Those TSR reports yeah, yeah, or yeah, whatever. Right, yeah. yeah. Whatever those are. If we, if we could just be doing that all day, right, just yeah. pretend yeah. sometimes, but like, I don't know. Yeah. This is, this is like one of the, the odd things about, uh, like barreling at this, this part of our life is the idea of going to work no matter what, I think still, compared to the idea of like staying home I, or maybe even going back to like a sick day, there was something kind of magic about a sick day. I feel like, did you guys ever have that experience or was a sick day just like, Oh man, I don't get to go to school today. No. Oh, like, like when you were a kid. Yes. When you were a kid. Yes. Yeah. There was this weird like balancing act of like, this is so great. I don't have to go to school, but then like, like you get to stay home. But then mom and dad, I feel like they were like, they would like make sure I don't know. I felt like when I was at home, mom and dad would like try and make sure I didn't have too much fun. The rule you was, know? yeah, you yeah. can't you can't stay yeah. home. Oh, and have excuse fun. me, excuse me. You're sick. You can't be having fun. It's like, no, I, I can't have fun. I do feel bad. I'm contagious. But, I, I'm contagious. But I'm pretty sure I could play some uh, Mario 64. So just let me do this, okay? <laughs> this is my sick day. What what were y'all sick days like as kids? Oh, fun. Were they? Yeah, my mom made them so much fun. Do you oh. think that she was just excited that you were just getting to like stay home and she had someone to hang I, out with? I think the one-on-one -on -one, like experience was more fun for her than maybe it should have been. Oh, sure. That 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 makes that makes sense. Cuz I mean, it does feel like I I literally on our drive over here. So we don't even have the baby yet, but I feel like the thought of the day like when she leaves and realizing that this like core thing that the relationship has revolved around for 18 to 22 years approximately oh, you're already thinking about her like going to college exactly it's like, <laughs> what are we gonna talk yeah. about <laughs> um he already misses her uh, <laughs> i know well it's it's funny because um i always I've, i always think that i like to share my hobbies with my friends because it means that I can always be killing two birds with one stone because yeah. it's like, you know, if you go out and I ride bikes, I'm both doing like fitness and spending time with friends right. uh, and doing something I enjoy. It's just efficient. It, it's just efficient. Yeah. Exactly. And that's, that's what I'm all about. <laughs> so like, I think that this will be 
for us, absolutely, it's going to be like one thing that you and I just both care about more than anything else. Right. And and so like I think this like central cause that like we're coming together to focus on. There is something special about that. Like if the kids are doing something either like really crazy or just funny, like we can share this moment of like looking across the room and like, oh my gosh, like <laughs> this is memorable for some reason. Like even it could be a really disgusting moment or it could be a, just oh a boy. really terrible moment or it could be hilarious. But there is something bonding about it, I think. Would you agree? I would totally agree with that. Like, I mean, sometimes I think that helps, like, make really hard situations just a lot funnier. Like, I think yesterday morning I was, uh, I don't even remember what I was trying to do, but I was sitting on the floor and I, I was holding Nate and just out of nowhere, like, Nick comes in and then, like, Luke looks over and he's like, what are you guys, you guys are, you guys all, we're getting dad? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you guys can't have fun without yeah, me. Yeah, like, so, like, Nick and Nate are both, like, they've been kind of feeling bad all week, so they're both just, like, clinging to me for, like, hold me, give me love, snuggle me, and Luke's just, like, you know, he's not there for snuggles, he's just there for, like, fun, play, ah, I'm a monster! And so he's, like, trying to, like, get on top of them and they're like crying because they're like actually sick oh. <laughs> and so like and then he's just like matching their level and just screaming back and all three of them are just doing this on top of me just crawling <laughs> all over me pushing me over and I'm just like I can't I don't know what at all I'm supposed to do <laughs> and Beth's just like <laughs> laughing at me and it's like this is a very hard situation because like I, I want to comfort everyone and I need Luke to stop doing this but it's also like really funny at the same time that makes sense that yeah. makes sense how how much of being a parent to you guys is like the idea. Cause it, it felt like growing up, our parents knew like what they were doing. Is, is there any part of like a perspective shift where you're like, Oh, we're, we're making some stuff up here or, sure. or, or do you feel like it's like, no, oh, you just read a book. If you don't know the answer, if like the, the answers are out there, the internet the, and I'm pff, the internet. Uh, I feel like I'm making stuff up a lot. Like there's a lot of stuff that just feels obvious and you're probably falling in all sorts of like little pitfalls but i think everyone falls into those and you just kind of like have to learn as you go but you're right like from my perspective mom and dad just always knew what they were doing uh and i don't know if that's the case for like i think luke probably thinks we know what we're doing but maybe he's also not old enough to be thinking about that stuff it yeah it, i i think that's interesting the other thing too is also just like now i don't know like i if you guys feel this either is i'm being 30 how old are we? 30, 32. Almost 32. Oh, you're almost 32. Almost 32. Yeah. Uh, is feeling like we're still, like we still haven't quite reached that stage where we're like properly an adult yet. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, yeah. We're about 33 over here. I'm like, yeah, when am I going to be an adult? Right. Like, I feel like some... once we got the minivan and looked back at three kids in the back <laughs> yeah. and like going on a trip, I was like, gosh, I think, I think we're there. Like, like it's, it's happened. It. You've officially <laughs> like, yeah. Like you're you're at that stage. Yeah, you, I feel you like evolved. y'all have checked the boxes. Right. I feel like maybe we're about to. It doesn't feel real yet. It doesn't really feel like I am, but you're like, oh, I guess I guess this is. I guess it. this is it. Yeah, this, the, is, this the, is what it feels like. This this is what it looks like. This is what I remember about seeing adults for the first time as a right. child. What is there anything you guys are doing right now? Like what what things are you trying to mentally prepare for the most? Like what do you think are going to be the things that are the hardest to adjust to that you're prepping for oh it's such a good question i think we're both pretty independent people yeah i think like with our work with our with like we come home and we think we talk about work all the time we talk about business ideas all the time and i feel like our brains are gonna have to really adjust to something else being priority yeah that's that's a i think a really good way to look at it like i think i i th- this is like the comparison i try to never make uh when when attempting to find my way into the the only experiences that I have caring for another living creature, which is dogs. Right. Um, And so I try not to like transfer too much of that, but I I think that there's, there is that thought like with, with dogs that as you are raising them in the beginning, it's like you can crate train them. And then if you go to work for the day, or if you want to go out and like have, you know, uh, dinner with your friends, then you can, you can put them in the crate or maybe they're just housebroken and you can just leave them out and it's, and it's no problem. And like, they understand that you are going to go and do stuff. And I think that is probably one of the big things that keeps rattling through my mind is like the, the realization that like having a small person that you are now responsible for, it's, it's not, it's not like, Oh, okay. Like eight months in a year in, 
it's similar to like raising a dog. It's like they're now housebroken. Now, now there will be that like ability to to potentially go and do something like this right. independently from them yeah. without having to go through like extra layers of coordination or or finding a babysitter or something like that. Uh, I, I think that there's probably going to be a break in period to to understanding that like this is this is now like a, like an all the time and always commitment responsibility a tiny human a tiny human that we have to like take with us everywhere everywhere what <laughs> right. yeah that's valid yes that's very valid yeah so i think i think there's there's a lot of that and the other thing that that i think is like i don't know hard to wrap my head around is that she'll be there and then i'm i'm taking like the reason we're recording this episode now is so that like i can i can leave work and have those first like three weeks on like my pater- my paternity leave, and I think that during that time, like in my head, I keep thinking like three weeks is forever, right? You know, yeah. like if <laughs> if I was going on like you know a vacation for three weeks or like yeah, like traveling to Spain for three weeks, it'd be like I will be a part of Spain by the end of this trip, right? Like you know, it's it's like that would be such an extended, uh, like travel, and in the scheme of things, it's like I'm going to come back to work and I'm going to have a three week old. Yeah. You know, and it's like that in that way, it seems so brief, like, like it doesn't seem like very much at all will have changed in those three weeks. That's going to be such a special time for you guys, though. Um, I'm like a little jealous hearing you talk about that. And I really hope you guys get the full three weeks of just you guys, because we like anticipated that. And then it was so strange with being in the NICU and I was in the hospital. And so. Jonathan was like in and out and trying to be flexible. And we were lucky, very lucky. We had some flexibility. Yeah. But I yeah. think that will be a really special like bonding time for you guys. Yes, that that is something. Uh, and I, I remember Jay talking about this a little bit, too. I think like when the twins were coming, where there was that like that realization that like this could be the last night where it's like y'all two and Luke. And I, I think that like when he explained that to me, it was something that I could like fundamentally wrap my head around. But then it's also like, I think as we get closer and, and even that idea of like, if she came early and like that due date wasn't this like reliable idea in, in all of the chaos that is having a child, it's like, I can't, I, I, I feel like I now have like a newfound respect for what that like last day could have been like, you know, like where, oh, right. where it's like, it's just like, it's just me and Alice for like tonight oh, i think i cried for like two hours the other night about that <laughs> yeah like just it's like, just it's like this the, it will only be the two of you like yeah your your last night where it's just the two of you is coming up and it's like you always you put so much emphasis on like this new chapter that's coming that i think it's very easy to forget that a different chapter is uh ending Woo. and i think it's okay <laughs> to like oh, man. Oh, no. here come the hormones <laughs> That there can be a little bit of mourning that goes with that, but I think that's okay and that's normal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, and I that I think it makes sense, and I think that you you're taking like the good with the bad every day, and, and or maybe not even bad, but just like bittersweet. The Different. bittersweet. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. And I think I, I think probably what it would be is is like I was talking to you guys like earlier today, but I've we've had this like Halloween due date. And it's like this odd thing that like somehow I've like gotten very attached to. So like as we're entering like the last few days of September, as we're like recording this and, and talking to you guys, you were you were saying that like Alice has now been pregnant further into the pregnancy than, than you were yes. with your pregnancies. Yep. And like that was something that like had not even occurred to me as a possibility that I could have a September baby. Yeah. And and, and like I don't know why that's like something that like means anything to me other than I don't know I don't get to know that much about her other than when she's coming you yeah know, it's it, like yeah so it's like it's the key detail that I have about her is I, I approximately know what her birthday is right and so it's like I for, I think that somehow that has now become like this like very inflated not not even like not even realizing that it was happening that like I knew I knew kind of sort of one thing about her. Right. And so I, I guess that's what I would mean is, is sort of like with, with Luke coming so early, sort of that idea of like you, you guys were expected in January and then he came in November and yep. it's like, 
I mean, the difference between that's literally a different year yeah. that he came in <laughs> that he came than, in. than anticipated. It was supposed to. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if you it, it just like is a weird thought experiment. Like if your child came as early as Luke did, you would presently have a one week old. Oh, like it would have started nope. last week. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We have to be careful with yeah. that. Like, <laughs> I'm we're sorry. glad that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, so we're glad yeah. that didn't happen. Yeah. yeah, coming right when she's supposed to. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, and we'll we'll transition away so that we don't have waterworks. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's getting really emotional. I know. All it's hard. It's it hard doesn't hard take much. <laughs> <laughs> Only talking about like the the most important mm. thing to us. Okay. Okay. So, transition. Mm. Transition. So uh, our office manager, manager Jordan. Uh, was trying to find a, a fun way for us to communicate with, with each other. And so she found a game where the premise is, uh, I think truth or drink in, <laughs> in, the, in the most literal sense. Uh, we don't, we're not really like going to play it in that capacity, but I, I think do you think meant, uh, truth and libate. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because, because libations. Yeah. Um, so the, these are questions where the idea would be that when asked, in, in traditional setting, you could either answer the question or just drink. So this might be something where it's like you'd be asked a question that you don't want to answer. So you're like, okay. So are you throwing this out to the group or are you going to like ask individuals? So, so I have a whole... Oh, I'm going to throw it out to the group. I'm okay. going to throw it out to the group. Yeah. And you guys can just sort of... It is like one of these things like with anything in the pop where it's, it's possible Enough. we'll go through like seven of these. Or possible. it's possible we will have one of them and then that will just be the and conversation. Then, who knows? Yeah, we're just off. Yeah, we're just off to the races. So this will either be a segment or it will literally just be the rest of the conversation. We'll see. Okay, so question number one. Out of all of us, whose eyes would you like to see the world through for a day? Oh, man. I am going to... Ben, I think I'm going to answer you. <laughs> okay. For uh, sure, Ben, for Yeah, me. I think you just have this like, extreme... I just... I feel like it would help me be your like uh co-worker and brother <laughs> all sure. of the time to just like experience what what is going through ben's mind all the time because you have like such a high level of introspection compared to most people yes i know and it seems like you're often focusing on like a lot of things at one time and i think jonathan yeah. and i have very like they're very different roles in his life, but yeah. we're very like similarly placed in Ben's life. Yeah. So trying to get a, a grasp on Ben's thoughts would be so helpful. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> there, there's, there's no doubt that I think that we've made the connection very fittingly with, with the pop before that. I think that like when Alice listens to it, she tends to agree with Jay. Mm -hmm. And I think, and I don't want to speak for you, Beth, that when you listen to it, you've tended to agree with me. There's definitely times. <laughs> I get that. I yeah. think even our, Enneagrams are like yeah, like swap. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's like me and Alice are threes, and you and Ben are twos. Yes, right? I feel like. Yes. Yeah, are you a yeah. three with me? So I, I, I uh, tested as a three wing two, but when reading through, it does feel like that that two that helper like a position pleaser. approach. Yeah, mm -hmm. sort of like it, I, I think. I have thought on many occasions that the number one thing that I would I would maybe be good at for a job is just being a consultant because it's not usually my own ideas that I feel like I can best think critically about, but rather if somebody was were to bring me their idea, like it's not hard for me. You you could probably bring me any any pitch, and if if I think you'd you, get excited about it, for yeah. Them. If if I could know. Because there aren't many like laws when it comes to the way that people communicate. But if, if somebody were able to express to me, this is important to me, and then I could rely on that fact, then that makes it very easy for me to like go all in on their goals, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. right. Because because there is a certain reliability. Like what Jay was saying is that like with, with my brain constantly having like 67 ideas flittering through at any one point in time. I don't even know what is important to me. Like I couldn't express to you what like my key goals are, right. which makes it very hard to then chase them because in, in Jay and I have talked about this a million times and Alice and I have talked about this a million times, but it's hard to figure out which like business venture to go for because on any given day I could be so excited about one of them. Uh, but then three weeks later, 
it probably has taken on an entirely new form. I think um, that's part of the fun for you. I think I think it's part of the fun. Other than at at some point, I would love to do something. <laughs> you know, like, right. like we're getting there, baby first. I, I know, yeah, baby first, baby first, yeah. yeah. Just just a small, you know, like mid midlife crisis. Yeah, as right. She's, as she's <laughs> entering her way here, um, but uh, interesting. Okay, I, I, what, I. What about you and Beth? Like, like who? who what, yeah. What would I, I think that it would have to be you? Uh, Alice, because <laughs> uh, like I, I for the same reasons, like I I have frequently thought about how ridiculously fascinating it could be to because I have a feeling the way that any other person's like inner monologue works would probably feel like a superpower to literally any other person, like if that makes sense. So like like in terms of getting to know them or no, in terms of um like if you were if you were in their driver's seat to the point where you were you were thinking in the same capacity that they were thinking it would mean that you would jump into my brain and realize that at any given point in time i'm i am literally thinking about more than five things at once mm-hmm. uh and and it for someone who can focus so specifically on one thing it might be like man this is like ridiculous like how was he able to think about like five things at once but then I think that if I were to get in like your shoes or Alice's shoes, for example, I feel like you'd be like, man, I'm like laser focused on something. Like if I could just dial in like this. Right. Like, like you could like, do you what, feel like if you were able to do that with someone else, you could then return to your own brain and be like, now I know how to do it. Yeah. Sort of. Sort of. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Or have some sense of like what it might feel like. Mm-hmm. Um, but more than anything. Yeah. It's, it's also just that um, I think for, like even like the relationship and understanding like communication and stuff and like how how other like ideas are being heard or where the perspective is coming from i think that would just be massively massively helpful to be able to hop inside of your brain you look like you have a thought i think i'm pretty straightforward (laughs) (laughs) i think i say what i mean if you say so (laughs) how about you (laughs) i think i think jonathan for the same reason just like it would be helpful i think it would just deepen my understanding which i think as we've been together for a million years yeah it's been a long time i I feel like i understand how your brain works for the most part yeah i think so i think i like i I know how you work yeah i got you it's not it's not always how my brain works but i know how right i know the differences Mm -hmm. so jay can i ask you you were telling me a situation yesterday about wedding planning where it was like it was the idea of um Like, Beth, as you were, like, actively, like, seeking out, like, vendors or, like, color schemes or, like, arrangements and stuff like that, um, that as you would present, like, well, what do you want to do about, like, this or this or this or, like, what color do you want your your groomsmen to be in or something? Like, Jay was saying that you guys ultimately ended up setting, like, meetings to specifically, like, sit down and focus and talk about it as, like, a means to kind of take both approaches so that like Jay wasn't, you know, just like trying to like fold laundry and then also answer a question about like, what are our centerpieces going to look like? So you compartmentalize. I don't even remember that, but now that you say it, yeah, that sounds like that was a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, what basically what was happening is, I, or the, the way I remember it is that Beth was having lots of phone calls with her mom and with like our wedding coordinator and like just doing lots of research on her own and just like coordinating tons of stuff. And so there's this big like iceberg of things happening beneath the surface. And then like she would come to me with like a question and I would just like answer it as a subject like, oh, why are like, why are we doing it that way or something like and I would like throw like some sort of wrench into the the things and it would be like that the like the the snowball effect would then just be like well, because of all these other things I've been doing and we already talked about that we're talking about that. it was like I I didn't know I don't. I'm unaware of all the things you're doing. You were and you're operating. It, yeah, it's like I'm only seeing this little bit of stuff. And that's like the one thing you asked me. And I'm unaware of this like mountain of work that was happening beneath it. And it's like, but like from, I think from your perspective, it was like, it should be pretty clear all the things I'm doing. It's like, how, how would it be clear? I, you know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Like, yeah, I I, yeah. I don't even remember that specifically, but I feel like that's something that's come up a lot with us where mm-hmm. I am like Ben always thinking about a million <laughs> things and then I like bombard you with something and you're like, I wasn't prepared to have this conversation right now. Yes. So yes. I've learned to like give you a heads up like, hey, let's talk about this tonight. 
I yeah. have I have not learned that yet. <laughs> I, I was like, we'll be like in the middle of a script. I'm like, hey, Jay, Jay, taco truck. What do you think? <laughs> I found a spot. I found a taco truck. It's like it's in the middle sale. of our TV yeah. shows at yeah. night. It's like, yeah. he pauses it. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> what, We're in for it. What is about to happen? Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. No, you're good. Yes, right. We love it. Moving it's on to good. another question. Great. Yes. Okay. Fire away. We'll deviate back into safe water briefly. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> no icebergs. Okay. What is your greatest style related regret as an adult? <laughs> <laughs> Have you glowed up since? What is my greatest style? Ooh, I think my eyebrows. Is this what we're like? This kind of style? Thing? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah, yeah, Any, yeah. I mean, what, yeah, whatever. I think eyebrows? Uh, yeah, yeah. AP I think so. Associated Press style? No. Uh, <laughs> wait, <laughs> right. do do I not know what your actual eyebrows look like? No, you sure don't. <laughs> what? You never will. Wow. You never will. Are these your real eyebrows? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I feel a little bit reassured. My by eyebrow this. game yeah. is probably weak in the scheme of eyebrow maintenance. Okay. <laughs> For what it's worth. I do. Uh, Send I would, me your tips. <laughs> I would say that my my eyebrow maintenance, as long as we're getting into it, it extends about as far as uh, the woman who cuts my hair will will take like a comb. And sort of like put it in there and just like it always looks so good just, when she does it too. And just like just like cuts them all short. Cause I do have like one eyebrow hair that will get like <laughs> like seven feet long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got that problem. Yeah. Every now and then it'll be I'll like catch it in the mirror. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> it's so weird. I, I don't have anyone buzz it. I just go in with the tweezers and I'm just boom. Oh, there yeah. you go. You can't just do get it. it out there. He's, he's taking matters into his I'll own go. And that, Then the problem is I'll, like, I'll, I'll start getting real like, what, what about that one? What <laughs> oh, about gosh. that one? Overplucking uh, is a problem. What? Jonathan keeps yeah. a pair of tweezers in the car. Fact. Ooh, what? Yeah. 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 Today. Yeah. Why? Ben, I'll tell you why. Literally because the entire time we were growing up, the entire time, like, at mom and dad's house, both houses, I never knew where the tweezers were. <laughs> Ever. Ever. I like I knew we owned them, but they were never where I thought they were. And it was like alarming how often that was a problem. I am blown away at the frequency at which you need tweezers. I don't I, I, don't think I, I agree. Have, I don't think I've touched tweezers for three years. Yeah. You haven't? But see, that's the thing. I don't think that's so. That's the thing. You might not need tweezers more than once every three years, and you might not you might need them like once a week. You just don't know. You just don't know. But I've discovered that when you need them, you really need them. And to not know where they are is an enormous hassle. And I lived that way for 30 years without <laughs> knowing where the tweezers were. And so, so when we no were, more. so no, no, when we were at the beach, uh, like two years ago, pre COVID Luke was walking on like this, uh, deck and he got three splinters at once in his foot. Oh, I, I feel like yeah. as kids splinters were like a, like an every single day problem. Yeah. So maybe that's just the thing. Like when you were a small child, like you even step on like, a wood deck differently and then once you're an adult you're like listen i had a whole lifetime of oh this. i know how to step on a deck that's for sure i think in particular when we were kids what was happening was do you remember our old sandbox i do yeah well do you remember the real fun of the sandbox Oh, getting on top of it. Getting on top of the roof, yeah. Oh. <laughs> getting on the roof, which was made out of uh, wood. Jay, it, was, it wasn't made out of splinters. It was made out of splinters. It was made out of splinters. <laughs> made out of splinters. <laughs> but boy, when you figured out, like, I can move this slide over here, and now I can be on the roof of something, that basically makes me king. And uh, we did that all the time. And that that was the source of all the splinters. And, and let me tell you, Dad, dad had this like maneuver with like uh, he would come home like I guess mom was bad at getting splinters out so she just like jumps away till dad gets home which was a bummer because I was like midnight which means you had to go to sleep with the splinter in your foot <laughs> or whatever and then dad would like wake you up and be like I guess mom would leave him a note like you're gonna have to go work on your son's foot <laughs> and he would like take like a needle though and like try push and out. like push it out and I think this is the you know what the problem is he knew where the tweezers were. He, mm -hmm. oh, he, he didn't, didn't know where the tweezers were. It sounds like that. It sounds like that. Like that. It was, that was, our, was our whole life. So anyway, we were at the beach. Luke gets three splinters in his foot at once. And mom had this like amazing pair of tweezers she busted out. And I was like, this is these are awesome. They were Revlon. So I think they're... <laughs> is that, is that I, your, is that your wick of the peak? They, yeah. Wick of the peak, Revlon tweezers, y'all. Okay. Go get some. We'll not link them. Go, no, not a sponsor. <laughs> not a sponsor. Just get, yeah, this is like one of those things where it's like, 
it may be this the, the the beauty industry has like understood the need for tweezers, so they make really like industrial tweezers. This yeah, it's kind of like, like how if you like, get a first aid kit, it's like kind of wimpy and lame. Oh, that's oh, the worst. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. You want just, those like you just go to the source. Mm-hmm. What the heck, y'all? Yeah, with the tweezers. With the tweezers. So hold on. As far as this pertains, like style related, like are you thinking about incorporating t- tweezers into your look? No, like a pocket protector with no. like, a, like a good pair of Revlon tweezers. I don't think in there. so. They are sitting in my center console, though. And okay. that's where so he knows they're going to be. And that's exact. And you know what? It came up today. <laughs> Why'd you need tweezers today? Because Luke had a splinter in his foot. <laughs> of course he did. Of <laughs> John got it out in one, one try. try. Let me tell you, wow. hidden talent. Tweezers. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, <laughs> apparently. No, but you uh, know this is going to be a thing, right? You know, absolutely. I don't even care. I don't even care. Uh, it was so yeah mom had these amazing pair of tweezers at the beach and I literally I went out when we got home I went to uh, CVS and I found the exact pair and I bought them and I was like these are so good you went to a physical store yeah I went to a physical store so I could see in person the tweezers <laughs> <laughs> I got, got give them a test drive and and I bought uh, I bought like fingernail clippers that also sit in my center console in my car that's smart yeah. you can never find the fingernail oh, clippers you know I can't even tell you how many times there have been, yeah yeah because you can't find them uh, <laughs> I have a very specific location of the house where the figure no clippers are and Beth will be like I can't find them you know where they are I'm like I know where they are they're right here so I look there I'm like you didn't because they're right here because <laughs> they're here <laughs> I know where the figure no clippers are same thing couldn't find them uh, so now they're in the center console because I can't even tell you how often in life I feel like. The the cutting mechanism I need is fingernail clippers. I ca- I can't I can't imagine anybody listening to this podcast right now and how the rest of their day is going to go. Be like I listened to a great podcast today. They talked about <laughs> fingernail clippers and tweezers for <laughs> twelve minutes. Yeah, this is I life mean, hacks. Life what? hacks. Life hacks. Fingernail clippers and tweezers in your center console on your car in your car. Okay, you you heard it. You here heard first. it here. Your life will be changed forever, and you'll always know. You'll always know where they are. <laughs> okay. Okay. Anybody have any style related regrets that we want yeah. to talk about? Okay. Yeah, Ali, <laughs> you said you said eyebrows. Yeah, what? eyebrow filler was like biggest game changer for me. Eyebrow filler. Hmm. Okay. Wait, like in a good way or a in bad way? In a good way. way. Yeah, good way. Yeah. So I think like I used to like try to manage my eyebrows without tweezers. I took a razor to them once. Wow. Ooh, that's risky. Yeah. No, my seventh grade school photos, you will never see them because <laughs> half my eyebrows were missing. So man, I feel like learning eyebrow maintenance was like huge, huge glow up for me. Okay. Okay. Beth? Any glow up moments? Any any fashion decisions you look back on? Gosh, I can't think. I Best mean, style has gotten like so on point. Oh, I feel well, thank like you. Yeah, like you're constantly. I feel I, like Beth, you can wear a romper better than any other person I've ever wow. seen. Yes, hundred percent. Yes, yeah. You, you like rompers are just like made <laughs> what for a you. Compliment. And your accessories are always on point. Oh like you always got like you. cute things. Wow. Yeah. Just keep. Yeah. I, guess <laughs> I love this show. This is great. <laughs> Yeah, I think I definitely try more. There was a point where I started trying more. I feel like kids have it easy these days as far as like you can just follow people on the internet and they'll show you what to wear and how to do your makeup. Of course, it's a double-edged sword because then you get to always feel like you're not as cute as someone else. Oh, sure. I feel like I just never thought about it that much when I was younger. I probably better. I would say that literally up until probably 11th grade for me, in high school, I wore nothing but cross country t shirts or like 5K t shirts from local events here. I think literally one of one of the t shirts that I would wear at least once every like eight days, like school days, was just the AEP 5K, and it like just said AEP 5K, like right <laughs> oh, here. Yeah, and, the, then, yeah, and then the back left. was a giant red square that said AEP, which right. stands for American Electric Power, which is our power company here. Yeah. That's where my dad works. Or Appalachian? It used to be yeah. Appalachian Power. Okay. Was when I right? I was young, I used to call it Appalachian Power. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. But yeah, so that, that was, I mean, for the longest period of time, it never and never occurred to me. Uh, to wear literally anything else. I would say I was in that same boat high school wise, like until maybe like the last three months of high school did I like really put much effort into my wardrobe and like thinking 
I like I I think it's probably stuff we've talked about in the pod before. It's like if people if I try and dress cool, people will know I'm trying to dress cool, and that's not cool. Right. But oh, like yeah. the right. flip side is that then you're just <laughs> absolutely not dressing cool, <laughs> and people also know because because you're not. So at some point, I got over that hurdle, and I was just like, I'm gonna just like try and actually wear like you know what might be cool clothes, and it like the effect was immediate. Abercrombie. Like yeah, it was like Abercrombie and American Eagle, or just like. I don't know. the The effect was I immediate. Like, I feel like I remember a like a white belt with like four leaf clovers on it. Was that a thing? That or, that that right. was the thing. But that was post high school because that was when I worked at American Eagle for three weeks. Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah. That. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Got it. Got yeah. I get the employee discount. Yeah, I did. I got the employee discount, which was massive. And then I also just went to like the clearance rack which also had insane discounts so i just walked out i spent like 30 bucks and came out with like a huge wardrobe of probably not great stuff but so did you actually make any money in three weeks or did you just i'm look buy clothes? no i mean i made money because uh i was not that was like the first like actual like i was employed by someone and had to show up on time and be at a place for a few hours uh kind of job i ever had So the money accumulated quickly, at least compared to any other (laughs) uh, income I'd ever had. Which was like refereeing. Yeah, which was like soccer refereeing, which I solely did so that I could pay to go to Beach Week. Um, I did not know that. Yes. (laughs) Well, not so. I mean, I guess I was always like, I don't know. I like soccer. This would be great. It'd be easy money. And I mean, it wasn't like that bad. I I will tell (laughs) you that that 90... 7.6% 7.6% of being a soccer referee is understanding the offsides rule. Yeah. Literally the uh, the other like two in change is just is, is is just like if the ball goes out off this person it goes the other way. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's that those are the rules of that, soccer. Even that to me as like a because we were always just side judges. Yes. That that like when you're playing like which direction you're going and which way it means the flag should go when the ball goes out is so hyper obvious. Your bias is so strong that like oh when you're playing the game. Yeah, when you're yes, playing the yes. game, you know exactly like, okay, white kicks the ball out, it's going, you know, with throw in goes to white, which means they're they're attacking this way, so the, the this flag goes up. Like like you're playing, you know which direction you're going. Yes. Ball goes out on the other team, boom, that way. <laughs> right. Yeah. But when we were refing, I would constantly have to like I would like repeat in my mind like, like white is right, white is right, or like red is right, or like green left, green left, green left. That green is left. exactly what I yeah. did. And then it would be like it, it would switch every yeah, time. Yeah, half time, and it switches. Yeah. And you're like, huh. crap. Okay, okay, back it up, back it up. White is left, green is right. Yeah, yeah. White is left, green is right. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I would repeat it too many times. Then yeah. it'd be like one of those things where you know, you know it's it's one thing or the other thing, but you can, you can't remember. But which, then you get oh, things it is. eventually you have those like 50 50 balls where both 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 kids just hit the ball at the same time and it comes out and they both look at you and they both point in the other direction <laughs> and you're <laughs> you just, just get, like ah you gotta commit yeah you, you gotta, gotta commit. commit okay new question are you guys ready yeah okay hang on I'm gonna try to find a really good one okay <laughs> okay this is random uh, what motto would you put on your family crest. <laughs> Does that have to be like in Latin then? No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, yeah. Just I mean, our family crest essay on it. Oh my goodness. Mm, what do no, we say the man. most? What what take do, the high road, maybe? Same team. Same team. I feel like, that's, I feel a good like one. That, that's probably ours. That's what like, we say the most. That's that's definitely like one of those like it's a, it's a philosophy that applies to a shocking number of things. Yeah, and it's just a good reminder. Like if we start getting like testy about something, it's like same team. It's like, yeah, we're we are in this together. Like yeah. we have common goals. Right. Like, you know, we're not against each we, other. We are not going anywhere. So like we need to figure out how to like come together and approach this like as a team instead of instead of as opposites Mm -hmm. instead instead of white and green right yeah yeah that's super good Um, good. how about you guys do you have anything i don't know i don't know if we have like any like go-to sayings or anything like that at the house yeah yeah (laughs) i don't know if we have like an obvious family motto that we would go for diaper time yeah diaper time go to bed (laughs) (laughs) don't touch that don't don't touch that (laughs) don't touch that get off the table i'm in the shower (laughs) 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 yep those all seem like good ones yeah Uh, okay 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 we'll pick something different okay uh describe a time you accidentally mortified your parents as a child accidentally uh, that's fitting mortified. following like i'm in the shower yeah <laughs> gosh yeah right accidentally yeah. mortified your parents ah uh, 
I feel like you have a, a, a kind of funny story about when uh, our younger brother Tyler stepped on a oh, pipe in the backyard. Oh my gosh, you're right. I mean, I guess maybe it was Tyler doing the mortifying a little bit. The story here is that um, Ty- Tyler, as younger brothers often often can be, was just on, on my nerves that day. What? Yeah. Was I on your nerves frequently? Yeah. Great. Sure. Great. I, this was yeah. not the time to ask that question. <laughs> no, we'll but, talk about it in therapy. Yeah. <laughs> no, but so Ty- Tyler was on my nerves, and I guess he'd been on my nerves a lot as of late. And it was just like a, like it was like in a very like demanding kind of like uh, season of life, where it was just like just do this, and it was like no, no, like asking, no, like no, thank you or please or anything. It was just like a lot of yelling. This is what I want right now, and sure. it was just like. I'm just not going to deal with this. Uh, like, you know, as his older brother, I'm like, no, I don't have to do what you say. Like, <laughs> Well, and that's, I was going to say, like, that'll be from a parenting standpoint. And it'll be interesting to see, like, as, as like the boys get older together, is that like you as the parent are attempting to like understand the psychology of your child and like how to best handle situations like that. And, like maybe not let them make demands or or whatever the case may be but their commitment to each other to be like to raise each other to be good people is none yeah like <laughs> like the priority right. like <clears throat> like at like to to your siblings for them to turn out good is not a consideration yeah so right they just want what they want <laughs> right. in the moment right. so yeah it might be the case that like tyler would walk in the room and be like it's my turn to watch tv and he'd be like i just sat down one minute ago so no it's not and i was here first so dibs that (laughs) kind of stuff so dibs so dibs like you can't just come in here and scream and expect to get your way so uh anyway that was sort of the that was the 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 situation the mood i was in was that like i'm not i'm just not listening to you um so anyway tyler comes up and the way our living room was situated in our old house was that there was a door to the backyard to the deck which had stairs down to the backyard from the living room uh, and the couch sat in front of that, and like that couch faced away. the TV. Yeah. So I was sitting on the couch watching TV, and all of a sudden I hear behind me Tyler just slamming on the door, just let me in. And I was just like, I'm not turning around until you're like at least a little bit nicer about it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like I'm just like, no, uh, I'm not gonna. I'm I'm so tired of this. I'm so over it. Like you, like you could say you could be nicer. And I was just like, I was just gonna ignore him until he was nice about it. Well, turns out that it would have been a really great time to turn around. And it was a very like boy who cried wolf situation because Tyler had just sliced his foot wide open on some exposed piece of pipe in the backyard. I have no idea what it was, but he is like bleeding hard out there. (laughs) And mom comes down the stairs and she looks and addresses the situation, just sees Tyler. She can see what's happening to Tyler. Right, right. (laughs) Which is blood. Which is blood. (laughs) And he's like crying and slamming on the door. And I'm just sitting there watching TV like, what? Don't care. Check it out, mom. Yeah. Not listening. <laughs> you oh, proud no. of me? Yeah. So anyway, I turned around and then I'm mortified, like, oh no. Yeah. yeah. And all I could say, and then he's like, why didn't you open the door? I was like, because he, because <laughs> he was screaming. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. That wasn't great. Did he have to go to the hospital? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, no. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Tyler. Mm-hmm. That yeah. was a bad week for Tyler. I think like not five days later, he was like playing basketball outside. I guess his foot was okay. And he went to do like it. He went to like dunk the basketball. Like we had the hoop lowered, and uh, he just hung on the rim. And I it, guess it wasn't like weighted. It wasn't so it just like tipped. Yeah, it, it wasn't weighted enough, so it tipped backwards, and the <laughs> rim slammed his fingers into the ground. Oh, I, think, I don't think he yeah. broke a finger. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Bad things kid. always happen to Tyler in like bursts. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah like he'd be fine, but like if one thing happened, and be like everybody but, yeah. put him in a like he needs pads. Yeah. <laughs> oh, poor dude. Yeah. Oh man. Oh, is there a story that you guys have with Anyone any else? of the boys where where they have mortified you? Where where it's been like a like, oh, what did I just walk in on? I don't think so. They yet. haven't been in public enough yet to really embarrass us. That's true. Outside the home, but yeah. I'm sure it's coming. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's fair. You'll have to keep I'm us too posted. scared to keep to take them all out. <laughs> 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 Allie, did you ever mortify your parents? You guys, you, uh, Alice, okay, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit, but you guys growing up 
had like there's the phrase like boys will be boys but everything you've told me about your childhood makes me think that girls will be girls because you guys had a uh uh <laughs> that story was standing um a airbag situation in your in your household right but i don't think that mortified our parents we never did it in public like, okay. that would just be where we would like punch each other in the gut as hard as we could <laughs> <laughs> and if you like brought it's them a to a simple the- concept <laughs> yeah, pretty much and if you brought them to your knee their knees you won <laughs> Oh, so, so just really go. You just really did, but you only got one chance. You couldn't just like wail on them. Yeah, you got. You had That's to like. The game. It was a surprise attack. Right. You just airbagged them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't. But with that, I mean, that was never in public. We were angels in public. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. we were very. I think I told my mom one time, like at the beach. That she like very loudly, like that she needed to shave her legs. Oh. Yeah, I'm like, Mom, you've got to shave your legs. She's like, Alice, we don't say that in public. And I'm like, Oh, okay. <laughs> I did not know that. I think that I embar- I, I think that was embarrassing for her. Okay, okay, I could. That, that's 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 fair. That's fair. It's not blood all over a porch, but you know, not no. Every, <laughs> no. not everything can be. No. What does your ultimate Sunday look like? Ultimate Sunday. It's a Sunday. A E Sunday A Y. Oh right. I'm, you yeah. know what? I'm gonna leave it open to interpretation. <laughs> so so everybody needs to commit to their answers <laughs> and and determine whether or not the other people are going to refer to the day or the ice cream treat. Right. Okay. Uh, I would say that Sundays for Allie and I is the it's the only day a week that you and I have off together mm-hmm. uh, because like being in the world of retail, Saturday is like your biggest yep. day for sales. Like got like got to be there for that. Um, which means that we we put a lot of emphasis on Sundays. Yeah, Sundays are a big deal for our relationship. It's like a big time, like no fly zone. I think our friends know not to like ask us to like make plans. Yeah, but I don't think we necessarily have like a perfect Sunday because recently it's been doing house projects and getting the nursery ready. And those have been like the most perfect Sundays. But I would say before this, it would be like going on a hike and then going to a brewery. We're yeah. going on a bike ride. That does sound awesome. Yeah. That like, does sound awesome. So, like, I think it would definitely depend. Yeah, I would say just about anything that has to do with a brewery is usually <laughs> my, my ideal Sunday. And we were mountain biking there for a little bit on Sundays. We were. Actually, all, all four of us were yeah. mountain biking together. And that was really fun. That was really cool. That was, And that was, that was like, um, like... This this very brief period of time, and then you were pregnant. Then so I got pregnant. Sort of, sort of, pregnant. I know we had to have a mm, baby. <laughs> ruining all of our mountain biking gains. <laughs> I do think a good mix of like an activity where you can like feel like you've worked out somehow, whether mm-hmm. it's biking, running, hiking, and then a good mix of leisure where you can have fun. Nice weather, mm-hmm. maybe a football game. Oh yeah, yes. Some yeah. Good yeah. foods and beverages. The, the, say. The the detail there about getting like some exercise in is something that has blown my mind uh, again, like sort of as we're entering adulthood about our parents, because every I would say that almost every single childhood vacation of ours hard stop had something to do with like uh, like going in and doing like a marathon or a race or like we were always going like if we were traveling somewhere, it was usually because there was like an adjoining event that they were running or right, doing or right. biking or whatever. Your parents yeah. are still that way. They, they are still yeah, that they way. They just got back from the Grand Canyon <sighs> and biking, hiking. Like that was it's, the core it's part like of It's like our trip. parents cannot justify vacation like like just for the sake of relaxing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Like they like it's like too too guilty to just have it's like way too self-indulgent to just have fun for to go on some trip just to have fun. But the thing is about it, I think what what like blows me away is that like it's not like they've had like the past couple of years where they like got really into like running or biking or something. Yeah. So like in the past couple of years on vacations, they've been good about it. Our entire lives, every single like year at the beach, mom and dad get up and they go for a run or go for a bike ride. Like before anybody's even up for breakfast, you come back and they're always just drenched in sweat. I'm up. Okay, well, yeah. I was never up. <laughs> Jay was a, Jay was an early riser, which yeah. I think always it felt like the most unfair advantage ever because I was like a night person, and mm-hmm. you want to know what your parents don't want to let you do at night? Stay up late. Yeah, but you want to know what they don't care about you doing? Getting up early. Yeah, it was it was really just like a bad a bad hand. <laughs> I guess so. <clears throat> anyway, that's how I felt about it at least. <laughs> um, 
Okay, this is a good question for my vanity. How have I helped you the most? How have you helped me the most? Yes. Is that, yeah. <laughs> is, this, is this all how has Ben <laughs> helped you the most? Yeah, to all of asker? us. This is what you're yeah. asking all three of us. How has Ben <laughs> helped me the most? I like the question. <laughs> Uh, I mean, well, you started this whole channel with me. That was pretty helpful. That, yeah, yeah. yeah, I was like, uh, I would say, I would say downright life changing. <laughs> I would say, I would agree. Yeah. But for both of us, truly. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's I would also say that in many ways, you set like a really high like comedy bar in my life. Comedy bar? Yes. Like I always thought you were the funniest person I knew. What? And... I always, I say that. yeah, I and say like, that all the time. like I was always <laughs> extremely like, especially growing up, I was extremely jealous of like your sense of humor and ability to make people oh. laugh. Like it, it just did not come as naturally to me. And like, I would watch you do it and I'd be like, that was hilarious. That was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Well, that is very surprising. I mean, that's, and it's not something that I would have, uh, but uh, I, there is that possibility if something comes naturally to you that you don't realize that you're doing it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and therefore it doesn't feel like a skill that you are like forever sharpening. Well, um, see, that's the thing. And it, yeah, it, like to me, it felt like something I really like wanted to work on a lot. Okay. Like, but I think because I thought like I, you know, I really like I thought you were like really funny. And I was like, I want to be more like that. Um, but I don't think it was ever something you were like actively working on. <laughs> God, <laughs> <laughs> I, no, it, I mean, it's it's odd, though, because I mean, it's there. There is no doubt about it. I think growing up like the the older brother, like perspective on things. For, and I mean, maybe we should just talked about it in high school so that like we could have like, you know, uh, helped each other feel more confident about specific things. But there there was there was no doubt in my mind like that you were like the most popular person in your class. And it was just sort of because I was like. <laughs> Me? Yes. Yeah. Like, like the class of 2006 at Cape Spring High. <laughs> yes. Like it, it. It was like, of course he is. Like, there's no two ways about it. How could he not be true? the most popular person? Who was the most popular person yes. in our class? <laughs> I don't know. I don't feel like we had popular people in our class. There were no. There were no popular. I, if that you were to ask me who was popular, I'd be like, I don't. We didn't have, I don't. That means you were one of them. I, <laughs> That's kind of true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although Beth was, Beth was the prom princess. Yeah. Yeah. I think I was popular in the sense that, like, people liked me, but not necessarily, like, I was cool. Yeah, oh, I think there's a difference. That, that feels like a really strange way to put it, um, or a very, like, eloquent way to put it, rather. Because, like, we, we've talked a lot about, like, our own high school experiences before, and there is that, like odd term of of like what does it mean to be popular because i do think probably just for every single person depending on what your relationship or what you value might make somebody else seem popular right so like like in the same sense you were talking about like like being funny like that might be the type of thing where if there was somebody in your class that was funny you would be like man like that person's got it because that was something you you valued right um but i don't know yeah like it's 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 hard to describe because I, and, and I felt like our school wasn't terrible about having like major, major clicks or like super extreme. Like um, the, it was never like the mean girl situation where you had like these people were that were like, you know, like ruled the halls and like dictated right. fashion and and all of that type of stuff. I don't. Is that actually a real thing anywhere? I don't know. I it, what what I will say is that like it felt painfully, obviously, painfully obvious to me who the cool kids were in other grades like like the grades above us it was there was like i can tell you hands down who the most popular people were in the class above us or even the class below us but like in our in our grade it was not like i mean i i, I don't know i i wouldn't have been like that's easily the most popular person here like right right <clears throat> maybe you're just too close to it yeah maybe because my my guess is that everybody in some capacity in high school is struggling with something like, I, I think there it would be so hard for me to imagine, like, even if you were to take the most popular person, like, the, the most popular person at your high school you could possibly think of and go talk to them about their high school experience, I just don't see there being any way that you would sit down with them and they'd be like, I ruled that school. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, I just I just don't think that that would be their take on it. Or like if they did, probably their adulthood <clears throat> is not as... Right, there's, their, there's that classic, Abby. like, peak peak in high school type of thing what were you like in high school Allie were you popular no no I think I was a lot like Violet from the Incredibles 
that's popular. Tony, Tony Ridinger likes her. Yeah. And he's like the bee's knees. Well, that means a popular boy likes her. <laughs> that doesn't mean she's popular. Mm-hmm. Oh, what is that? What happened then? Did popular boys no. like you? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, no, no, I no. think that's exactly what happened. How many proms did you go to? Six. Yeah, you were popular. Six. You were, you were popular. Six. six in one year or six? Over six total. Of the course of. Okay. Yeah. So, but like, but standard standard attendance for proms, at least at our school, was junior and senior year. So standard would be two. Standard would be two. Right. So, yeah. So you were you had a three times multiplier on it. I did. did you, so wait, did you go as like a as like a as a freshman and a sophomore and a junior and a senior? I did. Okay. Okay. So it wasn't like you got asked to six proms your senior year. No. Okay. No. I spread it out over four years. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think I went to five homecomings. Wow. Five or six homecomings. Okay. Man, no wonder okay. you work at a dress shop. I know. I, mean. <laughs> I know. Yeah. You were outfitted. I know. Yeah, I spent all my time here. You know? I, know. <laughs> I liked dresses. Yeah. <laughs> like, like dresses. Okay. okay. Okay, let's find a. Uh, let's see here, man. All of these questions are. It, it's very like spoken. It must be the case that if you're playing this game properly, that you're passing the cards. Oh, maybe I should pass the cards. Oh, here, here you go. You uh, go. You, you want me one. to read this one? Yeah, uh, many. No, you don't have to read that one. <coughs> but many of them were like, "Tell a story about sometime I was funny," and it's like, <laughs> "Okay, I don't need this anymore." <laughs> <laughs> let's see. <laughs> okay. Aside from moist, what word can't you stand the sound of? Yeah. What, what is the deal Ooh. with? I don't think that moist bothers me nearly uh, as yeah. much. It has. Same. Yeah, I does. It does not bother me. Yeah. Did, I'm sorry. Does, it's the appropriate word for describing a well baked cake. You know. Sure. Rest. I, I mm-hmm. usually think of a sponge. A sponge. A sponge. <laughs> yeah. Like moist. Just, it's moist. Yeah. Yeah. I, like I, I don't struggle with that word at all. Um, I mean, you could always use medium damp instead of moist. True. So that. Medium That's damp. true. Medium yeah. damp is like a little... <laughs> you want to call your cake medium damp. Well, <laughs> maybe you do. It's like, wow. You what did on you this put... Show. This is a medium <laughs> damp medium cake. medium damp. <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like the word pimple... Oh, you don't like that word? That's a bad it, word. I feel like it's like one of those... I think it's a word that sounds like what it is. Uh, that and doesn't it's like, bother me. Yeah. No? No. Uh, okay. Okay. Splice. Splice. I don't like the word splice. I, is it, wait, do you think of it like a very th- medical context? Or? Well, so I used to play on Game Boy, the Wario. Um, there was like a Wario game. Wario's okay. Woods. I'm not sure. But there was a part of it that if he, like, if he. <laughs> Y'all hear that motorcycle? That's quite loud. <laughs> no, I was like, is that? This I is, know. <laughs> I know. It's not, it's not normally like this because we normally we're, it's like a Saturday evening right now, but we normally record on like a Monday morning. People are going so crazy. We got there. we got some nightlife in yeah, the. In they're, the they're it was fun. homecoming. It's definitely homecoming somewhere because we saw all sorts of high schoolers dressed to the sixes out there. Oh yeah, yeah. they're yeah. they're fancy. Yeah, they're the sixes. fancy. Um, okay, so splice warriors. Splice. So woods, in maybe. the Wario game on the Game Boy. Um, he would split in half. Like oh. he would like kind of peel apart uh. when he when you lost lives or something. <coughs> okay. And like they would call it splicing, like because he would this, peel apart like in the middle uh, of his character. I can, and I can see it. It grossed me out and I stopped playing. I I got so close to finishing this game, but I stopped playing because I was Because like, of that. Yeah, because wow. it was like wow. Yeah. Because so, of the splicing. The, yep. Did it not reminds like it. me. Have you guys ever seen the movie Kingsman? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's there's a very splicey like where she like kicks. Yeah, she, like, with her little with her like knife feet. Yeah, knife shoes. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Splices okay. someone right in half. Ew, ew, yeah, ew, ew. yeah. It's not. I can see it. I can see it. Okay. How about you guys? Uh, you do have a word that sometimes I can't even think of it right now. It's on the tip of my tongue that I will say, and you're like, I hate that word. Like. Uh, it's like gestate or something. Do you know? <laughs> it's not gestate. that. It's not that. <laughs> it could be that. It could I mean, be gestate. That's, that's a reasonable bad word. One. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What is it? Do you know what I'm talking about? No. We've had this conversation before. We were like, stop saying that word and don't like that. Uh, uh, something like that. So there's remember? a G like, somewhere in, in the there. Context? I'd say, I'm pretty sure it's like stomach related. I don't know. Gruyere. No, like the, like the cheese. Gastrointestinal. Ah. I don't feel like you say that word. Uh, <laughs> it's like a oh, gristle. That's what it is. Oh, no. yes. oh man. <laughs> I feel like I can taste the word yes. gristle. Oh, yes, it's that. Yeah, yeah, that if they it. ever like find a bite, and 
Or if he finds a bite, he has to like say it and like put it in like, oh, you just ruined. I can't eat any more chicken now. Chicken's done. Chicken's done. <laughs> chicken is uh, th- honestly when I think growing up, one of the big things that that bothered me about eating fish was the potential to have like a bone. Yeah. Like because they were like so like small and and I don't know, whatever. Um and I, I just never wanted to like take a bite of like salmon and then have like a, like have to like take the bone out. Yeah. And I think as an adult, I'm like more fine with that. But it used to like I was concerned about it. Well, it's, the way it was presented to us as kids was like, now make sure you're being really careful because there might be a bone in there and you'll die. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. Felt like yeah, really yeah. scary. Everything was very like <coughs> dra- dramatized. Yeah. It's oh, like no. we, we don't. It doesn't need to be this scary. Yeah. yeah. What was like an extreme fear you had as a child? Like, I feel like I was always terrified there wouldn't be a bathroom somewhere. This, like, ruled my thoughts. And it's like, what a ridiculous thing. There will be a bathroom. Yeah. It's, it's, like, it's the law. <laughs> it's an interesting kind of, like, claustrophobia where it's kind of like it like like that sense of, like, feeling trapped right. maybe a little bit. Like, I needed to know, like, where <clears throat> would the bathroom be? At Girl Scout camp, they only had latrines. And this was, like, I would, like focus on this fact and worry like about it nervous yes that's an interesting one i i know growing up i had like a very very lengthy period of time where the we had a babysitter who watched the show beavis and butthead and that like those two characters is mm. is literally like what was like under my bed at night like Oof. i didn't have like a monster under the bed i had beavis and butthead <laughs> no. and like their appearance to this day it's like, creepy it kind it of weird. bothers me like yeah. i don't like like it, it is still the type of thing that like if it if it were like on in a room as an adult or like if I were at like a hotel lobby and somebody was watching it I would I would leave yeah, like I'm, I, I'm, I'd like, I'm not. not I'm not watching this I'm not here for it no, no not not at all it just made me wildly uncomfortable. Um, I thought tornadoes and hurricanes were going to be a much bigger problem. I think the oh. movie Twister did Quick that. Sand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Quick Sand is one of those. <clears throat> yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like, what, what, what is the deal with it? These are not daily challenges. Yeah. Right. Not we at live all. in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have any of those things. We don't, yeah. We live in such a mild part of the world where mm-hmm. it's just kind of like we don't we don't really have a lot of snow. We have like a medium amount of rain. We don't have any like bad windstorms hurricanes i mean we some sometimes things happen here i would say i would say no. the most we have is like flash flooding because we because of the valleys like if right. it rains yeah. everything funnels down to the middle yeah um so there's been that right okay another question jay okay i'm just gonna go at random i've been trying to find a, a solid one here um bu- 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 what are your vices have they gotten better or worse over time <laughs> oh dear mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, social media. Oh, I mean, advice. that's like just like picking up my phone when <coughs> I should be doing any other thing and then just scrolling and being stuck in the black hole of the phone. Yeah, I think that's one where I've I've really had to take like active steps, like removing apps from my phone as like the only method to not end up doing this exact thing. Um, and then the other thing I like, I am always aiming for is my screen time report at the end of the week. Like my goal is a max of three hours average per day. Like that's the number that feels like most comfortable to me Mm -hmm. is, is three hours. So that's what I'm shooting for. Do you hit it? I would say that most of the time I don't, I'm not into the fours. So You're like, like I, above three, I am I would say that I'm somewhere above three. So I would yeah. say most of the time I do not, I'm not like two hours, 40 minutes per day. That would be like a huge like win in this particular game. I play with myself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would say three hours, 17 minutes feels like my typical. Maybe instead of having like step challenges with friends, we should have like screen time. Challenges. Oh yeah. man. Yes. That's interesting. Yes. I feel like that would be solid. I that like would that. be a good one. <clears throat> Well, we were we were talking about it because we had dinner before we were recording. But the idea of like if if someday like smartphones became this thing where it was sort of like people are just choosing like not to have them. So in the same way that like like cigarettes were very common for our parents generation growing up where like it was kind of before the dangers of smoking cigarettes was was well known. Right, like everyone just did it. Everyone just smoked cigarettes. Um, and so like, you know, there were like smoking sections at restaurants and stuff like that which now is even gone but like when we were kids that was still a thing like you know they're like yeah. smoking or not um and so like we were we were sort of discussing that idea like what if 
you just didn't have a smartphone and like almost even if you were to think about like going to a restaurant and it's like, oh, would you, do you want to sit in the smartphone section or? Yeah. Like, can you imagine a future where <clears throat> if you see someone using a smartphone, it's the same like they are treated the same as someone who is using a cigarette is today. Right. Like, right. like you're like, like, I mean, I mean, people smoke. You know, it's not like it's not the worst thing ever. Sure. I, mean, I would encourage you to stop if you do. But, um, you know, like there, there is like a there's like, you know, at one point it was just everyone did it and it was totally socially acceptable. Yes. And no one thought twice about it. And now it's like very much like the dangers are known. So it feels much more like a like you're really playing with fire. I mean, I guess with smoking you are, but and yeah, and, yeah right. But the, and I think corny that, joke for the day, people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I think that's sort of the question too, though. Is is it's it's um, like if the conclusion is that your mental health is negatively impacted by use of smartphones, then it's like really what it comes down to. In the same way that you are like you might be addicted to smoking cigarettes, you are addicted to. You like the interaction that that dopamine hit, you know, like whatever is is happening with with the greater knowledge that this is having a net negative impact, even though you are doing something that you think you enjoy. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Um, and that's where the hard evidence would be kind of hard to to draw the line because there's probably something to be said for your own personal, you know, tenacity yeah. well, the, or the unfortunate thing about if this is true. It means that we are the ones who all of the statistics about the bad things happening to people will be based upon. Oh, like we're, you know? we are part of like the data right. set. It's that like, like, oh, yeah, after there was a whole generation of people smoking, now we know it gives you lung cancer. It's like you know, we, we will be that. We, what is our version of lung cancer? Oh, I don't want to think about it. Yeah. I don't want to think about it. <laughs> <clears throat> Splice. Ew. Uh, <laughs> New <hi>. question. <laughs> <clears throat> What's something you've done to try and be cool? <laughs> Everything. Everything. I'm ne never not trying. Start a podcast. <laughs> wear clear glasses. <laughs> Floral shirt. Floral shirt with rolled up sleeves. Yeah. Um, um, something that you've done to try to be cool. This is... It's tough because it's like, what are your primary motivations for anything? Like... Like, for example, having like a nice outfit can bring you confidence. Yeah. And it's like you could be doing that because it brings you confidence, which then makes you more capable uh, in social situations. It might also make you cool in the process, but not explicitly. I don't think that's like making you like like you're not trying to be cool. You're just trying to like feel good about yourself. But does it not feel like fashion is a is a corner of our our like social environment Sure that, sure. that like is very directly connected to the idea of coolness. So that, yes, I, I would agree with that. But I feel like this question is more like, like, did you jump off waterfalls because you thought it was cool? Or did you really <laughs> want to jump off waterfalls? Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. 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 Right <laughs> for it. Yeah. Mm. Uh-oh. But this it's to like a, rethink his whole life I, now. This Wait, is did I want question. to jump off stuff? Okay. So I, I genuinely think that so uh, the, to, to give some context here, I used to like to jump off of waterfalls or cliffs or anything into into water uh, from like perceived safe distance. Uh, wouldn't recommend doing what I did. Um, but I think that this goes back to uh, like overcoming a fear as a child. So we would go to Vermont uh, where our family has like a small like lake cabin and our dad had been going to the same lake cabin since he was probably 14 years old. So he has many childhood memories growing up in the same place. Uh, meaning as we were growing up, he was showing us a lot of the things that he did as he was growing up. One of those things was going to uh, a rock formation across the lake from our cabin uh, called Barn Rock. And basically you could just, it was like 300 feet deep water. So you could jump off of the rocks very safely and not have to worry about like hitting the bottom right. or anything like that. So I remember doing this for the first time and I think I was terrified to do it, but then ultimately did it and was extremely proud of myself for overcoming that fear. And it was right. like that emotion attached to that, I think was so great that then I was transposing, if that's even a word, 
that into if I continue to do the same activity, I will continue to get that same sense of accomplishment each time I do it. Did you? I I don't I don't think truly I did, but I don't think I could let go of that chase for a long period of time. Uh, and, and that is probably where I think it started to step outside of chasing it for like my own personal fulfillment reasons and started to be because I thought I could take a cool photo that I could post to like social media to be interesting. And so, so therefore I would, it maybe was because you wanted to look cool. I think I eventually. think I think eventually. eventually so this that, was also your vice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, absolutely. I would, I would say it was a vice that probably at some point in time almost killed me. Yeah. Um, I, the, my, my, we've told on the pot before, so I won't go into the full details of it, but I did a backflip from 50 feet and over rotated and landed flat on my back. Um, and to this day, it's just like one of those moments where it's like, maybe I died that day. <laughs> maybe Don't that... go jump off waterfalls. Yeah, no, I'm done with it. I'm done with yeah. it. Yeah. I, I gave it up. I, you know, now I'll just, now I'll just waddle around. I like to, I like to do, I like to do the diaper method, which is basically taking a life jacket, sticking your legs through the armholes, and yeah. then you just sort of bob. And then you yeah. just float in just, the water. Yeah, the diaper No method. jumping. No jumping. Right. No, no. This is me just, just relaxing. Usually there's a, there's a libation involved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Pretty good. Well, you, you guys didn't answer this question. Well, yeah. What did you try to do to be cool? What did you try to be cool? What did you try to do to be cool? Don't look at me. I her eyebrows. Uh, yeah, eyebrows. My eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be the answer for two things. <laughs> they made me so cool. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. What, what, what have I done to be cool? Hmm. You did a weightlifting competition. I don't think that was cool. <laughs> what? I don't know if that was like. I a thought it was cool incredible. Thing. Cool. I think. I think it. I think it was cool. I didn't get the impression you were doing it to be, to be cool. cool. I would yeah. agree with that. Yeah, yeah I would like, agree with that. I thought. But it was isn't cool. that I was the very most impressed. cool? When that, you're not that's <laughs> exactly when it. something's cool. It's you're not trying to be cool. Right. That goes back to your like. If you're trying. Right. If that's the thing. This is the thing. This is like if people know you're trying and you feel like it'll be obvious that you're trying just be effortlessly effortlessly cool all exactly that's, that's how hard how hard could it be how hard can it be hmm. i think people who are effortlessly cool are trying really hard <laughs> <laughs> unless they're truly effortless i can't say this uh-huh. i feel like this is the the general the appeal thing. of people who are like surfers is that by the very nature of the like activity that they've chosen to do they are also usually fit and tan and blonde and have that like sea spun hair which yeah. is just like sea spun hair looks good on everybody so it's like i think that that's why surfers sort of have that air of being effortlessly cool yeah i mean surfing is cool it is cool. no doubt it's also like yeah you're like riding like a pipeline and stuff right, yeah. like how awesome is that yeah you're interacting with the ocean hmm okay it's big i hmm okay yeah. You, you guys got anything else? I don't know. I mean, probably just like a lot of the, like the clothes I buy or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, I think that's probably pretty standard for most people. I think. I don't okay, know. Okay. <laughs> so the question then when it comes to fashion, and this can this can be directed at everybody, is are you picking your outfit based on like seeing a garment of clothes and being like, yes, like this is a, an extension of my personality. Like this represents who I am. I want to wear that. Or are you like... I don't like this at all, but I am fully aware of the fact that it is popular. And if I wear it, then I will be doing the popular thing. That is such a good question. And I feel like this particular season, the past year or two, I don't know if it's my season of life or what, but is the first time, you know, like skinny jeans are, are going out of style. So they say, and like, if you look at what younger like kids are wearing, it's, it's a different style than I'm comfortable with. And I'm having to push those limits of like, I'm not sure I like this, but I also don't want to be at that stage of life where I'm like, well, I'm not trying to keep up with trends anymore. I'm just like doing what I want. So right. I'm trying to balance that of like, I want it to be authentically things I like, but I also want to look cool. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, there, there's sort of like the trope I think among amongst like, um, middle-aged men dads to like wear like the like the jorts the white tube socks and like the white new balance trainer shoes yeah are you familiar with yeah, the look for sure yeah like maybe maybe like tucked in yeah a little bit a ball cap right there's, there's like a standard look it's almost a halloween costume to like be dressed up as like a dad 
uh, in this particular like very specific way. Yeah. And I've always wondered about that, like because it came, it became a trope because there's a certain amount of truth to it. Um, and it's like, is, is there a point where you just get where your sense of fashion is fixed in time? I, I, I have been thinking about this, uh, this, this exact thought has occurred to me a lot recently because I know that like a really trendy thing at the moment for like guys our age is exactly what you're wearing right now is these like short sleeve button up floral print shirts. Okay. Like kind of Hawaiian looking, but like my entire life, like it has almost been a trope that like there's just some like dad at a barbecue wearing a Hawaiian shirt. Yeah. And I'm like, why Flipping did they ever burger. buy those? Like they know that's the trope. Right. And it's like, now it's like, we're the one like right now those things are in. And it's like right now when you're like making all those decisions and it's like at some point you're just going to stop buying a ton of new shirts because your body's not changing that much and you're just not trying to keep up with it as much. And it's like now, like, are you just going to keep having that shirt and you're going to be the dad at the cookout with the Hawaiian shirt? That's like, okay, you know, so like, like, like I just that, you have the shirt now. Right, right. Mm. I, I think that I finally gave up because for the longest period of time, I think my goal all the time and always was to look as timeless as possible. Mm-hmm. So I would always wear very like kind of like earth tones. I would guess like like maroon. Then these are things I still wear. So uh, I'm not I'm not gonna say I've like fully departed from this, but like maroon, uh, gray, probably black, olive drab, green, um, were or navy. You know, there there's sort of things that like are always acceptable. Mm-hmm. Like no, you've branched out a lot in the yeah, last yeah for few sure. Years. Yeah, yeah, I feel like your fashion you've you've had way more fun with it. I think so. And I, I think that what I finally let go of was that thought of like, like it will be just as fun 20 years from now to look back on photos from today and be able to like, even even like if, if the exact outfit that I'm wearing today, uh, which which feels fashionable, uh, if 20 years from now, we're like, oh my God, do you remember that? Like, like yeah. what a funny yeah. look. It's going to be um, fun to look back, yeah. And I think that that is what I am embracing is that like someday it, it's such a nice like timestamp of like, who I was in 2021. It's like this look, this is what you looked like. Yeah. Right. So I think there used to be a part of me that would look at like old lady clothes. You know, there's like a certain way that old ladies dress. Let's Mm -hmm. be honest. And I would be like, Oh gosh, like I don't want to wear that when I'm an old lady. And it's Mm -hmm. like, Oh, Alice and I aren't going to be wearing outfits like that when we're 80. No, we're going to be leggings. We might be like wearing like leggings. Oversized. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and they're in, like, the young kids are going right. to be like, right. what are they wearing? What are those old ladies wearing? wearing? Right. Why are they wearing leggings? <laughs> right. That's what right. I, I genuinely think that everything about the way that we perceive like retirement aged, like, like the populace of those people is going to just shift because I think mm-hmm. that like we will be the first generation of people to retire having lived an entire life with video games, you know? So like, yeah, like as retired people, we are going to be in a very somewhat unique situation. But it, that's always true. More it's like, there's always, games. there's always like, the generation is like we were the first generation to retire with computers or with cars or with newspapers or you know like absolutely there's but, always there's always something but like one of the very classic retirement activities i would say now is to go and get like a fun car to drive parkways with to go and visit all of the national parks to go and buy an rv and go and like yeah be able to to camp in a semi luxurious way um like I, I think that some of the activities that you could that you could come to mind right now still sort of fit that idea of like what it may have been like to be the first generation where it was very common for every for every household to own a car. Mm-hmm. You know, like like certainly that's impacting the current retirement aged people in some capacity. Sure, like their yeah. trends. Right. Yeah. Like it, it's part of who they are. So like I've always wondered, because right now, like gaming feels like something that that is always like the youngins, you know? Um but it would be very interesting if in how old are we? If in like, I don't know, 40, 45, 50 years, if it is absolutely the case that it's like, oh, gaming is like a senior citizens game. Like like mm-hmm. the the pros are all senior citizens. All that's people, all they do all day, and they did it their whole life, mm-hmm. right? And they have they have the disposable income to do it. They have the time to do it. They have the desire to do it. Um, 
So it, it, I just think that that would be interesting because it would be such a drastic shakeup. Yeah. I, I mean, I can totally see that. I, my prediction is that it by the time we get there, that like virtual reality stuff is going to be awesome. Yeah. And that it will be like it like almost scary levels of escapism where you don't have to feel old at all. Oh, that's you weird know? to think about. <laughs> that's weird to think about, but I understand what you're saying. Very yeah. ready player one. Yeah, a l- maybe something like that. Okay. Maybe not to like the scale of like apocalypse, the stacks outside of Ohio. The oasis. You know, the oa- I don't think it's like the oasis or anything, but I could imagine or who knows, maybe it's even crazier than that, but I can I can imagine virtual reality be extremely appealing and addicting, especially to old people who have like lost like function in um, or like mobility like and motor stuff. skills or yeah. something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting. OK. OK. Well, uh, Beth and Alice, do you guys have do you guys have any questions or thoughts or anything you would like to throw at us or what is it like uh, having to deal with us having this as a career? Is that like a. Does that feel? It odd, doesn't feel strange. like we have to deal with you. Deal with it. <laughs> yeah, no. Like, Caught up with you two. Mm. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it's really fun. It's fun to like tell people about. It was hard to tell my dad about, like when we first started dating, <laughs> trying to like explain that. It's like, how do you make money? I don't get it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Explain it to me again. He, I still don't get no, it. He definitely know. understands better now. Um, Yes, I, I think that there's there's been enough time that has passed. But you had been in like a fairly long term relationship before you and I dated. So I think that I I was definitely walking into like a situation where it was like, you gotta like, who's this new guy? And what's up with a kind of like unexpected career? Right. right. <laughs> Is it it's a real thing? Right. Yeah. But yeah, no, y'all have given us some opportunities that are have been wild. Yeah. It's been so fun. Yeah. I feel yeah. grateful for the yeah. flexibility and I mean just listening to other friends talk about sometimes like husbands who are like a resident and they have a million hours of work they have to do at the hospital. And I'm like, wow, I'm so lucky that it's not like that. Yeah. 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 But it's nice. You guys have made it a nine to five and that it doesn't take over life at home either. Yeah. I I would say one of the big things that, that we focused on, like as we've because one of the things I've thought a lot about is like we're I don't know that we're exactly like pioneers of the industry or anything like that but if there is one thing that maybe possibly we could be providing to the community of people or to offer guidance like when when there might be someone asking us for advice uh would, would sort of be like the the steps that we took to make it as like stable and consistent as we possibly could so in some capacities it's maybe not the most uh lucrative digital endeavor out there like i don't know that we'll we'll ever be like on the side of a building at vidcon or anything like that maybe not but i think that there is my hope would be that there'd be some possibility that we will be able to make it a career you know right (laughs) because because that's what you know like whenever you explain it to people it's like there there is nobody there's nobody alive today who has lived an entire career as like a media creator yeah it's like a yes yeah, like a content creator right yeah right or whatever and and probably it's like in some capacities like independent journalists were this in you know in some way i guess so yeah what is it like freelancers yeah, l- yeah. like freelancers mm-hmm. yeah who wrote for like magazines and such yeah yeah interesting I definitely think you guys are like pioneers in your own right for this particular field. Okay. I think the way you've made it so consistent to where you can take a paternity leave, like that's amazing. You don't have to worry about like not take like not being paid or you're, you've created a business out of it. Yes. Which is super cool. Yes. Right. You truly can't put a price on having your own business where you guys can be flexible and like family oriented and, have appropriate work life balance. I mean, yeah. those things are so valuable that we're so lucky that we have that for our families. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's I mean, I think that's that's such a big such a big consideration too is just figuring out how to not only for ourselves but also the people that, you know, kind of work inside of our our team. Yeah. 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 So um otherwise, I think We've reached it. I think we're I there. Think we've done it. I think we made an episode. Yeah. Of the pop. How does it feel? 
feels great. How do you think it will feel when this episode is airing? I'm going to be crying my eyes out because like, I don't want to be oh, pregnant right. anymore. But I think like this coming out means I'm not going to be pregnant anymore. That she's going to be here. But I think that's going to make me sad because that means she's going to be getting old. She'll be like a week old, maybe. She's yeah. born. She's I know. getting old. I, <laughs> I think I'll be so sad that I'm not pregnant anymore. That that chapter's over. Yeah, yeah. There, there's like a weird thing about having a newborn where you can use the phrase like of her life a lot, with, and it, like in an accurate way. Like you can, you'll be able to accurately say like this was the biggest poop of your life. Like, and like <laughs> every that, day, almost. Like, yeah, almost every day. But like this, I, I mean, I mean, literally, this was the biggest one of your life, and I know because I've seen them all. <laughs> I've, I've, I, I, I have been there for every single all one of them. them. Oh. Yeah, that's oh, so fun. Poor little thing. I experienced some things this week with some there. sick babies. So uh, we've had, let's just yeah. say I, I've seen some things I can't unsee. Yeah. Oh no, I know. I, I do have to say that uh, this is this has been a very interesting week with Jay coming to work and telling me how the boys have been doing because it sounds <laughs> like it's been ring. a. I'm like, you Where? know, you know, I have one coming soon, right? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. really soon. Mm -hmm. You can't. Is this sugar coating it? No. No. <laughs> nope. okay. Okay. okay okay i'm excited hopefully we'll make it anyway it'll guys it'll be great thank you so much for tuning into this special episode of the pop if you would like to support us on patreon you can do so over at patreon.com slash popcorn culture otherwise we are on twitter and reddit if you have any feedback for the episode you want to send to me specifically you can do so at popcorn culture pod at gmail.com otherwise until next week pop pop